Well, congratulations, guys. We are on the last podcast of Unit 1. So yeah. you guys have stuck with us this whole time, and that's one wonderful. So, Yay. So uh, podcast or vodcast 1.9, uh, we're going to continue with our dimensional analysis mm-hmm. discussion. We need to talk about multidimensional problems and cubic and squared problems. Yeah, so, so it's the same process, guys. Yeah, so here's our rules. Here we go. Same exact rules. Yep. It, it gets Nothing's a little more changed. complex because now we're working with multiple dimensions. Right. So instead of just starting with something in the numerator over one, it's going to be something in the numerator and the denominator. Yep. Okay. So the key to multidimensional problems, oops, the key to multidimensional problems is to do one dimension at a time. At a time. So work on the top dimension first, and then work on the bottom dimension. So let's do an example here. Okay. So here's here's Mr. You? Sam's. Yep. Or Mr. Sam's. This That's is Mr. Not, me. not you. This is me, Mr. That's Bergman. Mr. Bergman. And I am traveling very rapidly um, in triathlon. So I'm in a triathlon right here. I don't know if that tra- rapidly. And I am <laughs> in my cool, uh, tight skin suit, mm. racing uh, for my life, so to speak. Um, this a couple of years ago. And uh, let's just see. All right. Now here is uh, some stuff. I, I keep track of my workouts, uh, like with a GPS device. And this is a ride I did on um, July the 7th of 2008, so last summer. And um, I started at 6.14 in the morning. <laughs> nice, good early morning. Let's see, July 7th, 6.14, that's my son's birthday. I probably got up at about 7. And um, <laughs> basically, I traveled um, a pretty fair distance. I traveled 100.08 miles. Wow. Yeah, it took me five hours and 49 minutes. And while you're at it, just as a note here, uh, speaking of quantitative data here, this was my elevation profile right here. Ooh, and there's the high point, and then bump, 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 and then back here. And wow. so um, I started here. This is Colorado Springs, Colorado. For those of you who are Colorado Springs people, understand the whole idea here. And I started, uh, looks like I pretty much went south. And then I went out way the heck out, and then I went up past near Ellicott, turned back, and then I turned on this road, and eventually made my way back to, I think I pretty much probably started uh, in Manitou Springs, actually. Yeah, no, no, it looks like, uh, well, you're no, I think I'm at the Home there. Depot. I bet yeah. I started at the Home Depot right there. And so anyways, so we're going to do some math with this. Now, something you can notice here, my average speed for 100 miles on a bicycle was 50. 17.2 miles per hour. So let's do a problem with that. We've got some conversion factors yeah. here. So let's say that I started at 17.2. Now, miles per hour. So That's the number of miles you went in one hour. Now, all right, miles per one hour. Right, now, because miles per hour is miles over hours. Never keep the units, a complex unit, in the numerator together. Always split it up. What I often see students do is they'll write 17.2 miles slashy hour. There are no slashies. Do not do the slashy thing. So what I want to do, actually we haven't asked what the question is, I want to convert this to meters per second. I have a slashy I know, but I want to convert it to meters per second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a fraction, and I'm just going to do the math here. So if I do miles... But I don't know the conversion from miles per hour to meters per second. I don't either. (laughs) So I'm going to go from... I'm going to ignore hour for just a moment. Leave it right there. I'm going to go from miles... And now I'm going to go to something. How am I going to go miles? Can we go miles to meters? Do well, we see. have that? No, I've got miles to miles kilometers. Miles to kilometers, or we can go miles to feet, and then no, miles to kilometers. And Yeah, let's I, go miles to kilometers. So yeah. actually, I'm going to go from miles to kilometers, yep. and, and then kilometers, then kilometers to meters. meters. Let's kind of make a little road map. Okay. So I can go miles to kilometers. Now let's go back and look at the number on 1. the chart 0. here. 0. There's 1.609 kilometers in one mile. Okay. My miles cancel. Now I just keep on going on my right. fraction. Now, we now, can go kilometers to meters. That's easy. I can go kilometers to meters. Now, that's yeah. not on my conversion no, table. So if I go back thing. to the conversion table, no kilometers to meter. No. You're going to have to use the thousand fact that meters there's a thousand meters in one, in one kilometer. Kilometer. And the kilometer cancels. All right. Now I'm in meters on the top. That's what I want. I want yeah. meters on top, that's and I good. want seconds on the bottom. So meters per hour, but that's not what we want. We want meters per second. Per second. So we need that hour to turn into something so else. I just keep going. I don't yeah. stop, and I see out. Now, this is something before this moment, whenever we've yes. done a problem, we've always canceled by putting a number on the bottom. We're going to put a number on the top, because the rule isn't bottom. It's opposite. Opposite. So ours is on the bottom, and I'm going to put um, minutes. Hours to minute. 
And of course, one hour, there are 60 minutes. Don't mix that up, by the way. It's easy no. to sometimes think yeah. there's 60 hours in a Now, minute. some people panic at this point because they don't want to cancel things out that aren't touching, but that's okay. The hours is on the bottom. Right. The hours is on the top. It doesn't matter where they are in the problem. That's correct. You can cancel a top to a bottom anywhere in the problem. And now I do one more again, and yes. I will just say I have the minutes on the bottom. I'll put minutes on the top, and I'll put seconds on the bottom. There is 60 seconds in one minute. You now this put is 60 minutes in one second. I know I didn't do I it. Saw. I was testing you. Yep. All right, now this is an interesting problem because we have three numbers on the top and mm -hmm. two on the bottom. The bottom ones are divide divide. Yep. The top ones are time. Yep. So, Mr. Sams, you got the calculator. I will punch in the calculator. Why don't you cancel those units out while I do that? I got 17.2 times 1.609 times, times a thousand. thousand divided by 60. Divided by 60. Anything in the top gets a times, anything in the bottom gets a divided. Enter. Seven, well, how many sig figs do we want? Three. Three. So I got 7.69 meters per second. Meters per second. So on average, you know, as going uphill, I would go slower and downhill faster. On average, on that bicycle, I was traveling 7.69 meters every second. So that's pretty fast, actually. Yeah. For 100 miles. Yeah. In big races, I'll try and travel 21, 22 miles an hour. Wow. But on training rides, you can't ever do that, especially with that elevation profile. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, most races aren't quite that hard. All right, let's do another one. Okay? Now, this is, uh, by the way, a sample of gold over here. Yeah. So gold has a density of 19.3 grams per milliliter. So 19.3 grams. No slashies over one milliliter. Now, I... Our problems will have slashies, yeah. but you, you need to write unslashy, unslashy them. That's a good way. Unslashy. So I need to convert Your grams to pounds and milliliters to liter. Oh, yeah. So basically, if I had a liter of gold, mm -hmm. like a, two, a liter bottle of pop, not a two liter, half of one right. of those, right? How much would it weigh in pounds? Yeah. Interesting question. Actually. You got an Nalgene bottle, that's one liter. That's a lot of gold. That'd be, well, let's see how, how much, much that was. How much that We'll weigh? find out. Yeah. All right, so 19.3 grams per one milliliter. Let's right. do the I know. mass first. Okay. So I got a G on the top, so yep. I'll put a G on the bottom, yep. and I'm going to go pound. Yep. Now, we've got to look at our conversion our table. table. Somewhere Go forward Where to our conversion. There, there it is. is. <laughs> Pounds to grams. That's that 454 number. 454 guess, right? grams in one pound. So there's 454 grams in one pound. Okay. The G's so cancel. We're well, pounds. we got pounds per pounds milliliter. Pounds per milliliter. We don't want pounds per milliliter. We want pounds per liter. Now, the milliliters on the bottom, hmm? who goes on that? Top. Top. And then liter. liter. There's a thousand. thousand. Now you got to know that. If you don't know that, you got to figure that out. And the milliliters cancel. Yep. So, Mr. Sams, what do we come up with? 19.3 divided, divided by 454 times 1,000. What do you get? 42.5. 42.5 pounds per liter. That's wow. My son weighs about 42 pounds. He's not a leader. He's a lot no, bigger. No, he's than a lot bigger than that. But did, gold is one of the most dense things that exists. So yeah. that's not totally surprising to me. Yeah. So a, a liter of gold would weigh up 42 pounds. Wow, that's a lot. That is. That's quite a bit. Okay, a couple more examples. Here.